Okay, today we're going to be talking about the different ways of making the wire cage over the light for the time machine console. And in particular, we've been waiting for the parts from PCB Way. I wanted to try their uh, resin printing of the cage part in both, well, the resin printing of it and aluminum printing, 3D printing of it and we can compare it to all the different ways. Now I've done a video showing how you can print the cage on an FDM printer and that's was done on my uh, A1 Mini and here's one not painted and you can kind of see the little marks why I had to pull the support parts off and you know it's not load bearing it's a cosmetic part so I think it's fine for that obviously if you grabbed it and crunched it in your hand you could you could break it and this is one was done on the resin printer and again, you can faintly see the uh, clear up in the top there. You can see where I had to remove the supports. I haven't prepped it in any other way. No sanding, no cleaning on any of these parts. And again, um, I think because resin in the home resin printers, unless you're buying some of the specialty resins, is basically like Bondo. If I were to take this and crush it, it probably should pretty much shatter. But as far as a cosmetic part, they both look just fine. Um, this one is from PCB Way, and I've got written down on the other side of this piece of paper what they called this, this particular resin. This one is a resin printed part. Here it is before painting. Comes in black, and uh, you can see there's a little bit of warpage. I had to sign off on warping being okay because they they examine the files and they know how their printers work and they knew that was going to be a a possibility and uh, I haven't tried heating and pulling that out but uh, it's it's more of a flexible resin which is kind of why I wanted to try it because I didn't want to have to buy it and try it at home uh, I think it'd be more forgiving if people were handling it or bumped into it or or grabbed it it would flex instead of shatter which uh, you know both FDM and this standard resin would be more likely to crack and shatter now this is one of their aluminum ones. Here's what it looks like when you receive it from them before paint. They've already primered it with a gray primer and here I hit it with a wire brush so you could see the aluminum color underneath. In case you're wondering what it looked like. It does have a little bit of a rough texture to it but I actually kind of expected that. It's much smoother than than the other ones. Well not not smoother than the resin printer, the 3D resin printers, but it's probably smoother than the FDM. And here it is with paint on it, and it's uh, quite durable, quite strong. When I was uh, buffing this one on the uh, wire wheel out there, and I knew I was going to, but I had to try it anyway, it caught. You know, the wire wheel is a motor driven thing, and it caught and it threw it across the room and it bounced off the concrete. It's where it hit on the concrete didn't break it. So actually very impressed with the uh, aluminum resin printing. And here's the uh, handmade brass which I've done videos showing you know how to do the FDM, the resin, and to make the part actually in handmade brass. Now when they sit on the uh, actual, oops, just drop the handmade brass one. When they sit on there that's what the brass one's going to look like. Here's the aluminum one. You can see how they, I also wanted to make sure that whatever they did was going to maintain the correct size and shape. I wanted to make sure that it was going to fit and it fits perfectly. And here's their uh, 3D PCB Ways more or less flexible resin print. Um, here was my home resin print. And the one I did on the FDM printer using special supports. You know, I, I kind of covered that in a video already, but in order to do this on an FDM, right about here, right about midway, I built in a part into it that just barely touches the insides of these verticals. Because otherwise, as the FDM printer is coming around and adding layer after layer, layer, once it gets about that far up, these little pieces sticking up start flexing and bending. And of course, as soon as that happens, then everything is just going to go to heck from there on up. 
So by adding that little support piece that you break out afterwards in the middle and then turning full supports on, so supports from the bed up to that piece and from that piece up into the top, you can see up in there. Um, and I selected organic tree supports because they're easier to remove. You can FDM print them quite easily if that's what you're into. So very pleased with what came from PCBWay. Now let's take a look at their timelines and pricing and all that good stuff. Basically I'm moving everything out of the way here. And let's get back over to this sheet of paper. Okay. So, the uh, resin ones that I had printed was with Somozo, S-O-M-O-S, Taurus was the type of resin they suggested that I use for that particular part, and I think they were right. I think the flexible is a, a better way to go for a durable part that isn't going to break. They ended up costing me $3.93 a piece. Dirt cheap. So let's just call that 4 bucks a piece. Uh, the aluminum ones, which I'm really impressed with for strength and durability and how well they fit, came down to being, let's call it 8 bucks each. It was $7.87 each. Now the, uh, let's see, took 13 days from when I placed the original order to receive them. And um, what else did I, I broke it down here. Of course they arrived on uh, today's date, even though you're seeing this video later, is 8-5, August, August the 5th is when I'm recording this video. I ordered them on July 23rd. Uh, production took them eight days to uh, make the part and then the rest of the time was just sending them, getting them sent here. Now, um, the pricing, the shipping was $32.02. So it's always going to be cheaper if you need more parts. If I'd ordered one part, I would have still had to have paid that shipping. So the more parts you order, the better. So if you've got other projects in mind, you're you're better putting those in there and working them into the, the pricing, since the pricing is so reasonable to begin with. Uh, there was one bank called a Bank Fee US Dollars, $4.43. I don't really know what that is. I know I, I did pay for this. I paid for it through PayPal. So is that a, a PayPal fee to have transferred the money or what? I don't know. I really don't know how all that works. But um, they also sent me some samples of their other handiwork. You know, because by the name PCB Way, here's one of their stickers, and here's one of their clear samples. Now this is kind of an interesting sample. There are certain places, like on the very bottom there, you can kind of see a line like maybe it was 3D printed in clear at about a 45 degree angle and then uh, very clearly has been um, buffed or polished, let's say polished. It almost looks like a flame polish. Uh, years ago I used to do a lot of flame polishing of acrylic and I could route it and cut it and do whatever I wanted and then I'd come back over and you hit it with an oxygen settling torch moving right along really quickly and it liquefies the surface and smooths out any of the marks. Well, I don't think this is a flame polish, I think this is a regular a buffing type polish thing but down where they couldn't get like down in there you can kind of see the lines a little bit so that made me think that it might have been printed like this now it could be CNC because they do CNC work too it's just that I'm not sure how a CNC machine would get in to do some of the the shapes that I'm seeing here so I'm thinking this is uh, 3D printed and if it is that's some really nice clear resin because it's uh, thick it's hefty doesn't have any smell or odor. It's not sticky or anything like that. So let's set that there. Another sample they sent is this ruler. In this particular side, we can see is in millimeters. The numbers are in centimeters, but it uh, shows the detail because this is a printed circuit board. Shows the detail of the masking that they're capable of doing, and the copper showing through. Here's a whole size chart. This side over here. Kind of shows how small of a pitch they can do on the on the microchips these days. I don't know what these measurements are, but uh, this side has the holes marked. 
really impressive, the quality of that. I know their printed circuit boards are very inexpensive and we know their quality is good. This they sent as a coaster, which is handy because normally right about there where my finger's pointing is where I have my uh, drink sitting while I'm working. I'm going to keep this coaster there, but again, this is a piece of phenolic. This is a printed circuit board, and it's kind of interesting because it shows all of the uh, the shapes, all the schematic symbols as a reference guide, but it's just something to have put on there to show the quality of their not only uh, soak screening afterwards and solder mask, but uh, how clean the edges and how fine of detail they can do. So a couple of really nice bits there. I'm going to put a link to PCB Way down below in case any of you want to uh, check it out. I mean it's totally up to you. It doesn't make any difference to me because I paid for this with my own money. Um, we've already kind of been through this once before. If I can find my mouse. It's down on the floor. Hang on here. Yeah, I got the mouse. Basically when you go to the website you've got all the different things that they can do. If you're into CNC, go there. If you're into printed circuit boards, go there. We're into 3D printing in this particular video. So into 3D printing, go down here, click on that. At this point, you can bring in a file in case you want to get a price quote. You don't have to sign up yet. You don't need to do a password or any of that stuff just to see if you're even interested. Bring the file in. Once it's loaded the file, they're going to want to know a quantity, so you can put in a quantity here. If you want to do a custom quantity, you'll find at the bottom of the quantity list it says custom, and you can type in the number that you wanted. Because their quantities come up, uh, I can't remember, it's like one, two, and then jumps to four, or five, or six, or something. Anyway, I used the custom quantity for my particular order. Uh, they're going to want to know what your file was done in. In my case, everything that we do and everything that comes off Thingiverse pretty much is going to be in millimeters. Then you're going to select what type of 3D printing you want because they do FDM printing also, but they'll do resin, which is what I had selected, but they also do nylon. Here's PLA, so you know you're into FDM. You got your standard PETG and TPU flexibles and all that kind of stuff, but I went clear down and selected aluminum for the really nice ones that uh, that I'm super impressed with. Granted, they were more expensive, but what the heck. But you can go through here, select what you want it made out of, you know, select the quantity, make sure you're at the millimeter, select what you want it made out of. Um, if their standard uh, resin 3D printing is a is a white material, that's the lowest cost one. So I think if you're just doing some standard uh, robot parts or some uh, prototyping of a project, I'd say just go with that. It's going to cost you the least amount. It's what they're set up to do. It's going to come back quick. So once you get all those in, there are other questions. They're going to want to know if you need to want to upload a technical drawing or do your parts need to be tapped and threaded. Um, basically, rents through anything extra you might want to do. And usually there's a disclaimer saying that you're well aware the part could come out warped because they didn't design it. And I fully expected that to happen with, with these. That's why this didn't surprise me when these came back like that. You know, less than perfect. Um, of all the ones I ordered, though, some of them did come out perfect. Okay, where are we? Anyway, you put all that stuff in. Then, you, then this will be clickable at that point. Just go ahead and click on it. And that's going to send that file and all this information to them. And based on what time of day it is, because they don't work, they don't answer in the middle of the night, they have business hours. They'll reply back to you telling you yes or no, and and you'll get a price quote at that point. It won't include, um, well actually even before you get that far, you'll get a rough price quote per part. But if you want the price quote with shipping, you're going to have to go all the way with the project and find out. And if you're impressed with it, then of course you're going to want to sign up with a password and all that kind of stuff so that you can... Uh, pay and you can pay with a credit card, you can pay through PayPal, whatever. But uh, just keep in mind the shipping is actually is it's fair. I mean it's coming all the way from China and it's uh, was well packaged. All of these uh, parts that I received were individually wrapped in bubble wrap and then in plastic bags and then they were in a large box and the box inside was wrapped with bubble wrap. So even though the box was kind of beat up, the parts inside were came out just fine. So 
kind of keep that in mind that yeah, 30 bucks for shipping if you're buying one part doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But if the 30 bucks for shipping or 34, whatever it was, um, if you're ordering 12 parts or 20 parts or something, depending, depending on their size, because they got to be able to fit it in a box. And if a box becomes oversized, just like in the U.S., your shipping is going to be more. Keep in mind, it may not be worth it to you, but then again, it might be worth it to you. I'm going to uh, investigate more on this clear. I'm going to send them an email and just ask them straight up whether this was 3D printed or whether it was CNC'd, because it's quite impressive, whichever way. And uh, geez, if it really was 3D printed and it's that clear, I can see doing some uh, robot projects with uh, clear bodies which could be really cool because then you can see the innards moving and working and everything. And I like, I like that idea. I also have another part for a, a private project that I'm doing that I'm going to have done in aluminum. And it's a, it's a big part. So it'll probably, probably cost me about 130 bucks or something for that one, just because the parts large. So shipping will be more also, but I'm going to look into that. And, uh, I think that's about all we have to say about this positive, uh, I give it a thumbs up. That seems like a good business. I haven't tried their printed circuit board part, but uh, I've seen enough other videos where people have that I can't think of anything bad to say about that, especially after seeing samples of what they're uh, capable of doing and how quick they can turn them around and how expensive they can turn them around. And you can do as many layer boards as you want. This is just a simple double-sided board as is this, and of course they can do single-sided too. But they can do as many layers as you want, as complex as you want to do.